No Film School's NAB 2022 coverage is brought to you by Blackmagic Design and Creative Solutions, which consists of small HD, Teradeck, and wooden camera. And Atomos. What's up, guys? I'm here at Audio Design Desk, and Gabriel is standing between an award win and an award nomination. We have a pro workflow and a kind of creative workflow. A lot of stuff going on here at Audio Design Desk. Gabriel, give me some top level. What is it that you guys have built? We're solving audio for video. So as a video editor myself, I found myself constantly struggling with audio workflows and like leaving my video editor to go to some website to find a whoosh or find that right music cue and it's like this disconnected process. We want to make it all part of the workflow so that sound can be part of the solution, not it's hard enough being a video editor. <laughs> Let's make it easier. Uh, and that's what we've done here. A lot of film editors and filmmakers in general don't pay enough attention to sound and then they hear something fantastic and they're like, wow, like, oh my God, or everyone always talks about they finished the mix for their film and they're like, it's a new film now. I feel like you guys are building things to make every filmmaker have that feeling every time out. That's the idea. We want it to be professional sound. We want it to be easy. You mentioned a pro workflow. What made you want to solve this problem and how did you start solving it? glad you asked. So I'm uh, first come from music. I got a couple of platinum albums, got to play with some of my heroes, and then I became a filmmaker. I made over 20 feature films. And about six years ago, I'm cutting the trailer to one of my movies, trying to find that rise that leads to the title. Er, title. I'm like out on the desktop, listening to these rises, because it takes too long to double click on each of the sounds inside. I was in Pro Tools at the time. And then I'm dragging it into Pro Tools, trimming it up, moving it over, untrimming it, listening to it, but it's not the right thing. I gotta go back out on my, it was just like this ridiculous process. We live in the world of AI. All of these systems are built on a hundred year old technology. They're all big digital versions of a tape machine. So we thought, well, wait a minute. What if every sound was easily categorized so that everyone can you know, name a transition, you know, a rise, a hit? And also, what if every sound knew where it was meant to connect to video? So right at that moment you want it to connect, you push H for hit, T for transition, R for rise, or any other kind of sound, a sound will populate. And if you want a different one, it knows where it connects, so it'll give you another one, give you another one, give you another one. Wow. I mean, I, I, I've definitely been on freesound.org downloading like a basketball court and everyone was speaking Italian and I was like, bro, I can't use this in my cut. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. Uh, but can we see this? Can we see this workflow that you're talking about? I'd love to show it to you. So this is Jared right here. Oh. Hey, Jared. Hi, hi. And he's going to show you our professional workflow. Take it away. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. So. Uh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> no problem. Just tell me when to go. And I'll just be kind of your boom operator, but I'll just be out of shot. Meet him up. I'll boom. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. Okay. Why don't you stand I, back I, there I, next to me? I can okay. Do it. Yeah, stand back there, and I can. You want to go around? I'm here if you want. Okay. It's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> I'm here if you need. Be of use. All right. So, just uh, tell me whenever we're good. Uh, Jared, take it away. All right, thank you. So here we have Audio Design Desk, and uh, for this example, I'm gonna be using uh, Final Cut Pro. First of all, this is us down here. We're this sta uh, standalone program that's wrapped around Final Cut Pro, and we have this video up here that we've been putting together. This is a quick fight scene from the film Sleepy Hollow. We're doing this little sword fight across a bridge here, and as I was editing it, I uh, threw in some markers to say, I want an ambience here, I want to, uh, I want to hit out here if we, it would pop up. And uh, we also have transitions and rises and everything else. Now that I want to bring it into Audio Design Desk, I'm just going to drag it into our little bridge here. And Audio Design Desk is going to notice all those markers and ask if we want them as comments or as audio. We're going to select audio. And then you'll notice that we instantly populated our entire timeline with sounds related to what I put in those markers. Now, since I left it a little uh, general, like just said hit, uh, it pulled any hit from our library and placed it right there at the moment of that marker. But we could have got a little more specific. We could have done other sounds. We could have said like an organic hit or a metallic hit, and it would have uh, been a, it would have pulled a specific type of hit and placed it there. Now, say I want to replace one of these regions. This hit, this looks like it goes on a little too long. I can press Command R, and I've instantly got a new hit in that exact same place. And that's part of the sonic intelligence here. Basically, we have attached sync markers to all of our sounds, so it knows exactly when that sound is supposed to happen. Now the system, basically, when I tell it to replace, I'm telling it, go find me a different hit, pull it out, 
play it right in the same exact spot as that one, and then we'll audition it from there. So now we can just kind of play through this. We can figure out uh, it, how well it did, and uh, we'll replace any other regions that we might need to. Maybe this, uh, this transition. Let's make it shorter. Command down. Now I have a shorter transition. Let's play it now. All right, so good so far. Let, let, let me just mic the, the speaker. Sure, we can do all that again. Sorry. <laughs> we can do all this twice. Okay. All right. All right. And so those those auto populated those those sounds those auto populated yeah and um uh, we're all a little impressed at how well this is doing just auto populating based on these markers but that's again the power of the sonic intelligence that we have created here it knows exactly what sounds that we're going to gravitate towards in this scene so moving on next thing we want to do is the foley for this now if you don't have your own foley recording studio which most of us don't you're just taking stems you're dragging them in you're cutting them up into individual elements you're singing into the video and then if you don't like it you're deleting it restarting the whole process it's very time consuming but we uh, created this trigger system over here in our triggers window. And we have one through zero here. That's the one through zero keys at the top of my keyboard. And if we look at the one key, I have all these wood uh, sandal run footsteps that I've applied to the key. If we go to the six trigger, I have all these sword clashes. Then if I go to my timeline and I press the six key, I get one of those sword clashes placed right at the point of the playhead in my timeline. This means that I can then uh, go back and uh, I could scrub through our clip here and right at the point right there where their swords clash. I could press that six key to get that sword clash. I also have sword whooshes on four and I have male grunts on five. So now we have our early set of sound design here. But with just a little bit of practice in Audio Design Desk, you can actually perform and create all of the Foley for this scene in real time by pressing the number keys. And it looks like he's typing like the Dewey Decimal System right here. It looks really cool over on this side. Yeah, sorry, I, I, uh, it's, it's it's hard to focus and talk at the same time for that. There was a lot. There's a lot of sound that came in right here. Uh, all of this sound, all of this foley, I just did right there, right in front of you, in real time. That that's like, it looks like at least eight, twelve tracks of audio that you just did in one pass. Yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> if I were a little better, I could probably do even more. So, <laughs> I, as somebody who has sliced like footstep seventeen on like sound ideas library and like manually dragged them and split, this is insane. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. But I mean, we'll we'll be realistic. I mean, maybe this isn't a hundred percent. One of the things I noticed is uh, the sword hits and sword whooshes were a little loud, right? So we have this content-aware timeline that knows the difference between all these sounds. I can just go to my select drop down here go to subtype, select sword hit, press shift down twice, and now all of my sword hits throughout the entire project are down by four decibels. I can then do the same exact thing for all my sword whooshes. Let's go to select swoosh. Uh, I, like the actual, I actually like the ones that are at the end where his body's flying through midair. It's a little comedic. Uh, but all the other ones, loud. So let's bring those down to negative six decibels. Great, now we have some light mixing with all that foley I instantly created. And we've spent maybe 30 seconds on it total. I'm just thinking about the hours of my life that I lost not using Audio Design Desk, and you know I'm honestly getting a little depressed right now. <laughs> yeah, well, we were we were all in that same boat, and that's uh, that's why we've all gravitated towards Audio Design Desk now that we've seen it. So. Um, so now that we've got all the foley and we've got all the sound design, the next thing we need to do is create music to tie it all together. So let's do that. Let's mute everything else first. Let's go to the beginning of our timeline here. Let's uh, reset our parameters. And then we're just going to drop in a music key by pressing the Z key. Now I've got music. Great. This is all already kind of interesting. But we can you know, replace it, try a bunch of different things. And this is kind of coming up at random. So we can then. Uh, make this less random by selecting horror. We can select intensities five and four here, and then we can go back to our queue and we can just replace it and see what came in. That is a pretty intense horror music queue that just came in right off the bat there. 
So uh, that, that is one route, but since this is a major motion picture, we want to create an original score for this. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. What is, you can't be using stock music in a major motion picture. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go up here to our sound packs. We're going to open up all of them. We're going to deselect them all except for the Marvelous Sound Pack. Now this is one of our music construction kits, so the orchestra one specifically. That means I can go to my trigger pad here. We can go over to the music side. We have beat, bass, chord, line, lead, all the essential elements of music you can ask for. We're just going to start with the beat and we're going to play it. And it's pretty good. Maybe I want it a little more intense. So I'm going to select intensities 5 and 4 again. So then we can go back, we're going to replace it, and we can just cycle through sounds here. Now this one I'm noticing is a synthetic. This is like a, a synth drum set. So let's make sure that it's also going to come in organic. We can go back, we can replace it, and we can just listen to it from here. And maybe we have to flip through a couple. Oh, I like the sound of this one. That's very pounding. Uh, I love it. So let's go ahead and add a percussion line on top of it. That's a good one. I mean, you're just like composing music on the timeline. It's kind of like not right fair. In front of you. Yes, right here in front of you. Uh, and what's great is you notice that as I was composing this uh, right here on the timeline, all of these music regions are staying in sync with each other. And that's because we're actually time stretching as well as pitch shifting all of these music regions to match each other based on your global settings. So I have it set to 120 BPM. That way it's stretching them so you can cycle through thousands of different scores on the fly in real time while auditioning it with your video. Can we just play back this situation? Because I, I am like... The entire thing? Yeah. Absolutely. Let's do it. Um, I'm going to do a funny mic situation. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, <laughs> incredible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a, those are my words. You can, yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Audio Design Desk. And then if you want to import that project back into uh, your whatever um, DAW you were using to mix and master, we have uh, Pro Tools and Logic. Uh, we go to Ableton, whatever it is you're working in. If you want to send it back to your uh, video editor, we go to Premiere, Final Cut, Avid as well. Wow, wow. How long have you guys been working on the software? Uh, so uh, the software has been in works for about six years, I think. Um, uh, we only just released about two years ago, though. And it's, it's, wow. a, it's a very small team, so it took us a while to build up this AI and this whole system and, and the interface as well to, to be able to quickly trigger all of these sounds. We got our mic situation hooked up. Let, let's just play it back one more time for the people and just give them, give them a taste of this flavor that you've been able to lay on us. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> Hold on, sorry. Can I move this? I want to move that out of the way, my fault. I, I moved it when I was trying to show you that other thing. Okay. Knocked him dead. <laughs> Good one. Good one. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, Absolutely. And I, I, I want to congratulate you on your award. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, we're very excited, and you know, um, hopefully, one of many to come. Uh, uh, well, well earned. Um, thank you, Gabriel. Like, I can't even show my face to the camera right now because my my mind was a little bit blown, and you have even more stuff to show us. Tell us about what we're about to see next. So Jonathan Ontiveros is going to show us kind of a creator workflow where he's got lots of titles and transitions and something that's more of a promo as opposed to like a feature film. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the guys from Motion VFX actually set this up for us. So those guys are super cool. They make the best the best titles and transitions in the world. OK, OK. Well, well Gabriel, uh, or, sorry. Yeah. Um, I am Gabriel. Jonathan. Yes, Jonathan. Can we just, let's, 
can we just yeah <laughs> can you just uh, tee up Jonathan yeah yeah, yeah. Real quick? yeah absolutely so what we just showed you was like a professional workflow for a feature film but for promos for things like titles and transitions uh, Jonathan Ontiveros is going to show us that workflow Jonathan Looking forward to it, my man. What, what do you got? So today, I'm going to show you what the average day-to-day -day content creator usually struggles through because we may not be so fortunate to have our own professional recording studio. We may not have the budget to be able to hire a Foley artist to gather our sounds, or I might not even have the right sound to make my video go to the next level. So in this case, I'm going to show you a quick demo. Um, with Motion VFX, they send us this video here that has all these transitions and all these titles, and they need sounds to them. So because of everything that Jared just uh, demoed there, I can utilize those same exact tools to incorporate creating promo ads here. So the first thing I usually like to do in this case is I would like to bring in a full mix. So because everything is all trigger-based, as you saw prior to, I could hit Z, and it's going to bring in a full mix for you, right? And I could just listen and audition different sounds all in real time until I find the one that I'm looking for. But because we have such a massive sound library, this could take me forever if I don't have my replacement parameters set up. So I'm going to go to the replacements here, and I'm going to go based off genre. And for this ad, it seems very uplifting, so maybe I might try some pop music. So let's just hit Command-R and start listening to some of the, the sounds it brings us. Okay, so we're getting somewhere here. But you can just see how easy it is that I can just change up the genre. Maybe let's try hip-hop here. Okay, this one sounds cool. Perfect, I think I like that one right there. So I'm gonna go in and just cut the music right at the end that you see right there, and I'm gonna add a little fade so it just fades out. Awesome, so I didn't even have to leave the timeline to find the music cue that I'm looking for. So now I'm finished up with that, we need to start talking about the sound design here. So as you saw, I do have quite a bit of information going on there. There's a lot of spinning around and transitioning. So the great thing about Audio Design Desk is that everything is trigger based, like if I hit H for hit, T for transition, R for rise, I'm gonna utilize those tools and I'm gonna perform the sound design here in real time for you really quick. So just gonna hit H for hit every time I see something interesting, a transition, a rise transition, maybe a hit, transition, transition. Good transition right there. Hit, 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 transition. Boom. So I'm going to just mute the music real quick because we're just going to listen to the sound design right now. So Audio Design Desk pulled out all the sound design elements all randomly, but there's one thing that I noticed is that it sounds a little too intense to my liking. For a promo like this, I'm trying to keep the sound design a little more subtle and I'm not trying to get very intense in this case. So it's great that I can honestly just go to my intensity parameter, set the intensity to maybe one and two, and I can select just the sound design because all of our sounds know their role. They'll know if it's a music, sound effects, or foley. So I can just highlight all the sound design, hit Command R, now it's gonna replace it with everything all subtle for me. Which is gonna work perfect because I want it to live right behind the music there, but you're also gonna get that, that feeling, that characteristic that we're looking for. So, right when the bike switches, like that's crazy. That was yeah. and pure luck, but also not luck because yeah, of the exactly. intelligence inside. Well, you know, in that case, let's just say if I don't like this riser right here, I can just go directly to this one. And if I option up, I can also just focus on my timeline here and replace just that riser. So as I was doing over there, I could do the same thing here and just dial in more on my, my timeline. So you know what, now that you bring that up, I'm actually going to try a stutter because I think a stutter transitioning in there will look great. So I'm gonna do that, and I know I want the rise to be pretty short, so I'm gonna just make the duration down low. And it went from 500 plus sounds to now 26 potential sounds that I could uh, bring in here. So I just auditioned all the risers that I think sound good. Like that first one I think was perfect. I just need that little length right there. And now I can just solo the rise. Let's hear that. Cool, I think that's gonna work perfect right there, right? But there's also one thing that's missing right there is the sound effect. So we obviously have that bicycle spinning right there. So the great thing about that marker that I just showed you is that I could just go right back to where the bicycle starts, hit option G, and we like to call this thing the magic marker because right here I could just start typing in keywords that describe the visual that I'm trying to achieve the right sound for. So two things that come to mind when I see this right here is bicycle and spinning. Mm -hmm. I could simply just start typing in bicycle, spinning. It's gonna narrow down our search to eight sounds here that should fit exactly what I'm looking for. Perfect, look at that. Cool. First one. First one, yeah. I think I'm actually gonna do the second one though, just for the heck of it. So boom, I just double click, and now it lives directly on my timeline. Oh man, look it's at incredible. that. I could just keep all my creative workflow all on my timeline. So now that I have all that in there, let's listen to the entire promo. Awesome. And you could just see how easy it was for me just to apply all the sounds, keep all my focus on the timeline, because in any other dot, the second you leave the timeline, you start losing it on your creative workflow. Yeah, it's you're, such a time consuming, a tedious thing, and it's been like that for decades. Yeah, you're, in the, you're in the finder, and then you're trying to drag in sounds, yeah. and, the, and then it's like, no, but I got to copy it over to the right drive in order to get it. 
Yeah, it's such a tedious process, and when you're dragging and drop and you think it's gonna sound great, only to find out you're disappointed that it doesn't fit right, so you just gotta delete, and we do this rinse and repeat process. So all this, we are completely bypassing to make the entire process fun, creative, and fast. This is incredible. This is incredible. I, I almost need a hug right here. Uh, this gentleman has created something um, that I can just see from my own life, having edited several feature films, having directed a couple feature films, multiple commercials, documentaries. The amount of work that we have to do on this, this you're up till five, oh, just a couple hours, you tell your girlfriend, and then it's like, yes. you get home at 4 a.m. Thank you, Gabriel. Our pleasure. Thanks for taking the time. All right.